every command God gives, He wants us to trust the Holy Spirit to empower us to fulfill it. Are you all here? Stand upon thy feet, man of God. Stand upon thy feet. When that commandment came, when those words were uttered, the Holy Spirit entered. And notice Ezekiel said, and the Holy Spirit entered into me. And he stood me up. When you're standing up by the Holy Ghost, nothing can knock you down. Hallelujah. Between the power of the mind and the power of the spirit, we can walk in perpetual victory. We can have a victory after victory after victory through the power that is available to us in the Holy Ghost. Ezekiel chapter 2. Look at verse 1. Notice this is at the beginning of Ezekiel's ministry. Notice we're at chapter 2. At the opening of his ministry in the earth. Notice verse 1 please. And he, that's God said unto me, Son of man, do what? Read it louder. Son of man, stand on thy feet. Now notice this is not a suggestion. It's a command. Stand on your feet. This is a call for Ezekiel to arise and fulfill his purpose in the earth. Amen. It's a command from the Lord Hallelujah. to arise, to stand up and do what I'm calling you to do. Yeah. Now look at verse 2 please, the next verse. When the command came, and the Spirit did what? Yes. What's the point? We cannot arise without the Holy Ghost entering into us. Once He enters, then we can rise up and fulfill purpose. Yes. Notice. When the command came to arise, stand upon your feet, then the Spirit entered into me. When he spoke, what did he say? Arise, stand upon thy feet. When God spoke those words, when he spoke that command, the Spirit of the Lord entered into me. And he set me upon my what? What was the command? Stand upon your feet. Who set him upon his feet? The Spirit. What's a good insight here? You cannot stand and do the work of God. Trust in your own strength to stand. It's the Holy Spirit entered into him. It was the Holy Spirit that stood him up upon his feet. Why? Because the command to stand came from God. And every command God gives, he wants us to trust the Holy Spirit to empower us to fulfill it. Are you all here? Stand upon thy feet, man of God. Stand
stand upon thy feet. When that commandment came, when those words were uttered, the Holy Spirit entered. And notice Ezekiel said, and the Holy Spirit entered into me. And he stood me up. When you're standing up by the Holy Ghost, nothing can knock you down. Hallelujah. For there is no power greater than he. Well, let's move on. Notice chapter 3, please. Glory to God. Yes. When the commandment comes, trust the Holy Ghost to help you. Notice chapter 3. Look at verse 22. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me. And he said unto me, what? Arise. He said, what? Arise. Notice that's another command. God has given to the man of God. The first command was stand upon your feet. This command is to arise. Notice what happens, please. Look at verse 24. Then the spirit did what? Notice, every time the commandment came for you and I to move out and do the will of God, we got to say, Holy Spirit, come in. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Equip me, empower me, strengthen me, raise me up. Glory to God. Notice, it's a, then the Spirit entered into me and I did what? Read it. It's the Holy Spirit. When the commandment came, arise! Again, the Holy Spirit set him upon his feet. Hallelujah. If you're not standing today firm upon your feet, you need the Holy Ghost to enter you afresh. I said you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit all over again. Notice this is only the second chapter. And the Spirit of the Lord came into him again when the commandment came. Arise! Glory to God. Yes, maybe you were standing last year, but the question is, are you standing today? Wow! Holy Spirit! Arise! in us are you all here notice chapter 36 please thank you Lord we must learn to stand by the power of the Holy Ghost and not in our own strength notice every time the commandment came for the man of God to move he moved by the power of the spirit he arose by the power of the spirit he stood on his feet by the power of the Holy Ghost hallelujah when you stand by that power no devil can knock you down hallelujah well, let's go back to chapter 3. Let me just read this one. Well, I'm just so excited. Oh! Look at chapter 3. Look at verse 8. Notice God says, Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their forehead, like an adamant stone. That's a solid rock. Like an adamant stone, hotter than flint, have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be thou dis dismayed at their looks. For what? Yeah, they're tough. They're mean. But because you're standing by the Holy Ghost, you can't be knocked over. You can't be knocked down. You can't fall. I know, I know, I know our position is hard, but I stand you up by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. While we're still standing, we're standing because the Holy Ghost put us on our feet. Hey, are you standing up by your own strength? That's why you're always falling. We 
can you stand by him, you're stronger than any opposition that comes to knock you down. Are y'all here? Now, I notice chapter 36, please. And look at verse 20, uh, 27. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Notice God says, and I will put my spirit. That's what we need. The Holy Spirit. And I will put my spirit within you. Where must he enter? He must enter into us. Holy Spirit, fill us. Holy Spirit, come into me. Notice it says, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to do what? To do what? I'll cause you to walk. We've gone beyond standing. We've gone beyond arising. As after I command you to stand, now I want to start walking in you. Now I want to start moving. And listen to me, please. God said, I'll fill you with my spirit. And he said, I will cause you to walk. You're not walking in your ability. You're not moving in your strength. No, it's the Holy Ghost that is coming. And we're walking. We're moving in the earth to do the will of God. Notice, and I'll cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgment and do them what's the point we cannot do the commands of God without his spirit Amen. dwelling on the inside of us Amen. we just can't perform what God directs us to do except his spirit fills our lives. Yes. Notice in every case, the Holy Ghost comes in. The Holy Ghost comes in. That's what causes me to stand. That's what causes me to arise. That's what causes me to walk in the will of God, performing the commands of the Lord, walking in the directives of God for my life in the earth. It's not me. It's the Spirit of God that God has placed in me. He's called the Holy Ghost. He's called the Spirit of the living God. And he wants to live inside of us. Wow! Glory to God. Notice the next chapter, please. Notice the next chapter. Oh, somebody better hold my mule because I feel a shout coming on. Notice chapter 37 and look at verse 3. Verse 2 says that these bones were very dry. We're talking about dry bones. Verse 2 says that they were very dry. Let's pick up at verse 3. And God said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Can these very dry bones, they've been dead for a long time, can these things live again? Notice God says, can they live? And I answered and said, oh God, thou knowest. I don't know if something dead for so long, something dry and so stale. I don't know if you can sin revival. I don't know if you can stand them up again. They've been laying down for a long time. Can they live? Well, let's see. Look at verse 5. Then the Lord said unto me, I'm sorry, then the Lord said, Unto these bones, behold, I will cause what? Breath. Now in the Hebrew, that word breath is the same word spirit. I will cause my spirit to do what? Yes, I don't care how long you've been dead. I don't care how long you've been dry. God want to fill you with his spirit. God want to cause his spirit. 
spirit to enter into you again. Whoa! What happens when the spirit comes in? Even dry bones stand up on their feet. Whoa! Glory. Notice please. Notice please. I will cause my spirit, my breath to enter in to you. Whoa, look at verse 9. Then said he unto me, Son of man, prophesy unto the what? Now that word when is the very same word in the Hebrew text that's translated spirit. God said, son of man, I want you to prophesy to the spirit. I want you to say, Holy Ghost, fall. Spirit of God, fill them. Spirit of God, move upon them. I want you to prophesy to the Holy Ghost. These things, they come alive by the Spirit of God. Say, Holy Spirit, fill them again. Fall, Spirit of God. Move. You all know what? In the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2, God said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then verse 2 says, listen, verse 2 is critical. And the earth was without form and void and darkness covered this planet. And then verse 2 said, and the Spirit of God began to move. You know what? Every life form, every living thing, every beautiful thing you see in the earth, it's because the Holy Spirit moved. Wow! Without the Holy Ghost, there wouldn't be a flower. Without the Holy Ghost, there wouldn't be a sea bass. Without the Holy Ghost, this place was dead. It was full of darkness. It was without form. It was empty and void. But then the Bible says, the Holy Ghost began to move. Whoa, hallelujah. I'm telling you today, when he moves in our midst, I don't care how dead you are. I don't care what gloom is in your life. I don't care what form that's empty, that's a void, that exists in your life when the Holy Ghost moves today he's going to give you new life he's going to give you a new walk he's going to give you a new stand because the Holy Ghost is the spirit of life he's the spirit of power if he can move upon the whole earth and bring life to where there was death and voidness and darkness. What can he do for your pitiful little existence? He can turn your life upside down. Say, son of man, I want you to prophesy. Speak to the spirit. Tell the spirit to fall over this death. Notice what happens, please. Look at verse 10. So I prophesied. I obeyed what God told me. So I prophesied. As he commanded me. And what happened? Read it. And the spirit. That word breath is literal. In the Hebrew is the word spirit. And the spirit came into them. And the Spirit came into them just like he had in my life in chapter 1 and in chapter 2 and in chapter 3. Now, what I've experienced, God is releasing me in the earth to release to others. Holy Spirit, come in them. Holy Spirit, come in them. And now notice what happens, please. So I prophesied as God told me, and the Spirit came into them, and they lived. And what did they do? Read it. Read it, and they did what? Just like me, when the Holy Ghost comes into you, I don't care how bad off you are, when he enters you, the first thing he does is stand you up on your feet. Whoa! I said the first thing he does, you weak person, you worm of a person, you 
person. You disgusting person who bites the dust. You're always groveling in the sand. When the Holy Ghost comes, the first thing he does is stand you up. Stand you on your feet. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Look at the next verse. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones, these very dry bones are the whole house of Israel. These are my people. These are my people existing without the Holy Ghost. These are my people who haven't had the Holy Ghost enter into them. No, they're dry. They're laying down. They're dead. Hallelujah. God said, preacher, preach till the Holy Spirit falls. Preacher, Hallelujah. preach till the Holy Ghost enters into them. Preacher, preach till they're all baptized in power. Notice, please. These dry bones, they are the whole house of Israel. They are my people. Behold, they say, in their, in their dried state, they say, our bones are dried. And our hope is what? Oh. Well, have you ever felt hopeless? Yeah. Have you ever felt helpless? Yeah. Have you ever felt like God has just forsaken you? Have you ever felt like there was no way out? Well, the Bible says that's how God's people felt. They felt hopeless. Their confession over their own lives were, our bones are dry. Our life is in the dust. We've been laying down here a long time. We've even given up hope there could ever be any change. But God said, man of God, go to them. Go to them and preach to the firefall. Go to them and preach to heaven visits earth. Are y'all in the house? And notice what. Now y'all know I'm preaching when Tommy says, Amen. <laughs> Look at verse 13. Look at verse 13. <laughs> and you shall know, God said. You who said it's over for me. I know I'm God's person. I know I've accepted Jesus. But life has been so hard. The struggle has been so long. And I've been so tried. Notice what God says. And you shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O oh my people. Well, I know he was God when he came to me and resurrected me from death. I know I was dead in trespasses and sins. I know I was dead in my filth and in my mess. I could not have helped myself. If I could have helped myself, I would have helped me. I would have helped me before I tried to help you. I had no help to give. I know I'm standing today because of God. I know God did it. I know God broke the habit. I know God raised me up. I know it was God who did it. God says, when I resurrect you from death, you shall know I'm God. My mama couldn't have helped me. My daddy couldn't have helped me. No psychologist could have helped my problems. God did it. Notice the next verse. And I shall put my spirit where? That makes all the difference. Oh, my people. Oh, my people. When I shall put my spirit in you. 
and you shall live. And you shall live by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the life that comes from heaven, a life that nothing dead in the earth can hinder or touch or contaminate. This is a life that is everlasting. This is a life that is eternal. It comes from heaven through the Holy Spirit. Are y'all in the house? Yeah. Say something louder. Yeah. My God, this brother preaching. Yeah, and y'all like you're going to sleep on me. Yeah. My God. Hallelujah. We can close the book and run around the building 15 times. Yeah. If we believe it, you see. But you know we can't do that because I got a lot more to cover. You understand that. Now, notice if you will, please. I love it. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5. Preach, preach. Ephesians, uh, 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 it's kind of, you know, you missed, uh, anyways. <laughs> 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 Ephesians chapter 5. Look at verse 14. Don't miss what we are about to read. Paul wrote Ephesians to the church, didn't he? He wrote Ephesians to the believers. Notice he says in verse 14, Wherefore God said, Awake thou that sleepeth. Well, now what do sleeping people do? They lie down. If nobody sleeps standing up, I said nobody, I said nobody goes to sleep on their feet. Try it. I bet you you can't do it. I'll bet you the million dollars I got in my pocket. Uh, listen. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from where? Amen. Now notice this is a commandment, not a suggestion. Anything God says, he expects us to do. He said, awake and arise. Awake and arise from the dead. The question is, how do we as Christians arise from death? How do we do it? Read verse 18 as loud as your lungs will allow. One, two, three, read. Now here is how we fulfill the command. Don't be drunk with wine. That's a not. Do not be drunk with wine, but be filled. Be filled. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's how we arise. That's how we stand. We must let the Holy Ghost enter into us anew. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you for watching Victory for Today. To request your copy of today's broadcast on CD or DVD, call 407 296 7131. Or email us at victoryfortoday at aol.com. Until next time, remember, only through the cross of Christ, there's hope for tomorrow and victory for today.